Welcome to section 8 of Fungi. This is our Fungi Overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Candida albicans, which you can see right here. This scene will take place inside of a factory that makes Canadian flags out of cotton. The word Canada sounds like Candida, so all of these Canadian flags front and center should help you remember that this image is about Candida albicans. Now you can see that we've added our first character to the scene. This is one of the employees that works on the conveyor belt with the cotton during the initial stages of flag production. You can see that this guy is goofing off though. Rather than organizing the cotton appropriately, he is building a snowman out of huge cotton balls. These two cotton balls stacked on top of each other resemble budding yeast, which is here to help you remember that Canada reproduces through budding. A butterfly happened to make its way inside of this little factory that we can see off to the side. This is our recurring symbol for the dimorphic fungi, which should help you remember that Candida is a dimorphic fungus. If you turn your attention towards the back of the image, you can see that we've shown a fruit tree next to the cold icicles outside. The fruit tree with little spherical shaped fruit resembles the morphology of pseudohyphae and budding yeast. The icicles are here to help you remember that this type of morphology occurs at cold temperatures. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that Candida forms pseudohyphae and budding yeast at 20 degrees or cold temperatures. Before I show an image of this, let's define pseudohyphae. These look kind of like hyphae, but are actually elongated budding yeast cells that just look like hyphae, hence the name pseudohyphae. So imagine that there is a yeast cell and another yeast cell begins to bud off like this. This is totally normal and what most budding yeast cells will do. However, in the case of Canada, the budding yeast cells sometimes stay connected together and elongate. So you get two elongated yeast cells that would look kind of like this. These also tend to form little constricted areas between the two cells, as I've shown right here. And these resemble septae, but are really just constrictions. And this type of morphology is referred to as pseudohyphae. This is an image of pseudohyphae and budding yeast. You can see the pseudohyphae right here and the circular budding yeast cells over here. You may also hear the budding yeast cells of Canada referred to as blastocanidia, and this is a high yield word to be familiar with. So you may see pseudohyphae and blastocanidia. All right, so we talked about the morphology of Canada at cold temperatures. Now let's talk about the morphology at warm temperatures. First, notice that this guy is drinking out of a straw, and it resembles the morphology of a germ tube. Also, he's drinking some hot coffee to start his day, and the reference to the coffee being hot should help you remember that germ tube formation occurs at 37 degrees Celsius or at warm temperatures. This is an image of germ tube formation. This type of morphology is seen by taking a sample of the pathogen and warming it up to 37 degrees Celsius for three hours. If the organism is candida, then these germ tube structures will form. As you can see, the circular structures right here are yeast cells and the elongated structures coming off of the yeast cells right here are true hyphae. It's high yield to understand this test and to be able to recognize this morphology. Okay, moving on. Notice that there are also some flowers next to the window. And just like in prior videos, the flower should help you think of normal flora. So candida is part of the normal flora of the mouth, skin, vagina, and intestines. Now we've added a cat to the scene. This is the owner's cat that he likes to keep in his office. If you look closely, you can see that the cat is trying to catch a fish for breakfast. Poor fish, hopefully someone will stop this cat before it's too late, right? In any case, we've shown the cat here in an attempt to give you some PTSD from our bacteria section. Remember all of the cats from bacteria and how this was our symbol for the catalase test? Well, Canada is also catalase positive, which is kind of a random fact, but important nonetheless. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test. We covered this test in more detail in the chapter on bacteria, so go check that out if you're confused. Briefly, recall that the bubbles right here indicate that the organism is catalase positive. All right, our next character to the scene is this girl working on the conveyor belt. As you can see, she's eating those yummy cotton balls right off of the mat. I guess she just can't resist, even though her manager is standing right behind her. Anyway, the cotton is a symbol for candida, and the fact that she's eating the cotton should help you think of an oral candida infection, which is known as thrush. If you look at her arm, you can see that she's wearing a band-aid, which is to make you think of HIV or AIDS. Finally, this is all occurring right next to a moving conveyor belt with a sign that says max rate equals 200. And this should help you think of a CD4 count of 200. So putting all of these ideas together should help you remember that candida can cause oral thrush in immunocompromised patients, such as an AIDS patient with a CD4 count less than 200. This can also occur in other immunocompromised individuals, such as neonates, diabetics, or a cancer patient on chemotherapy. However, the association with AIDS and the specific CD4 count is probably the highest yield point to be familiar with. Next, notice that she's scraping the cotton balls off of the mat in front of her. This idea of scraping should help you remember that the lesions in oral thrush can be easily scraped off. This is important because EBV can cause oral hairy leukoplakia in HIV patients, which may be similar to oral thrush. 
However, the EBV lesions are not able to be scraped off, whereas the oral lesions associated with Canada can be scraped off. This is an image of oral thrush. As you can see, the tongue is coated with a scrapable white plaque. Now you can see that we've added a bunch of cotton balls on the conveyor belt. The conveyor belt itself can be thought of as a symbol for the esophagus because it's moving the cotton balls from the top of the image down to the bottom of the image, just like the esophagus moves food from the oral cavity to the stomach. So all of these mounds of cotton on the conveyor belt should help you think of candida plaques on the esophagus. Also, the max rate equals 200 sign on the conveyor belt should make you think of AIDS patients with a CD4 count less than 200. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that candida can cause esophagitis in AIDS patients with a CD4 count less than 200. This is an endoscopic image of esophageal candidiasis. As you can see, the esophagus is coated with white plaques. Now let's talk about treatment for oral thrush and esophageal candidiasis. First, notice that we've shown the girl eating cotton wearing a shawl with the letter A on it. This is one of our recurring symbols and is here to help you remember that oral and esophageal infections caused by candida can be treated with azoles. Next, notice that we've shown some Funyun snacks right next to this girl. The Funyuns are here to help you think of the echinocandin drugs, which all end with a suffix fungin. So for example, caspofungin and mycofungin are echinocandins. Anyway, echinocandins can also be used for oral and esophageal candid infections. Finally, notice that we've shown the floor manager wearing a shirt with a picture of Satan. This floor manager is a pretty nice guy, and the fact that he has a picture of Satan on his shirt should help you think of Nystatin. Nice Satan, nice Nystatin. Nice we introduced Nystatin in our bacteria videos, but it's here again to help you remember that Nystatin can also be used for oral and esophageal candida infections. Okay, let's move on to discuss other clinical features of candida. If we look to the right, we can see one of the employees that is responsible for organizing the cotton neatly into baskets. You can see that she was a bit distracted and accidentally spilled some of the cotton onto her crotch area. Again, the cotton represents candida, so the fact that it's on her crotch should help you remember that candida can cause vulvovaginitis. Also notice that she has dyed beads in her hair, which is her symbol for diabetes. And she also has a container of pills next to her, which should make you think of antibiotics. So putting these ideas together should help you remember that candida can cause vulvovaginitis, especially in patients with diabetes or those who are taking antibiotics. Also, we've intentionally made the cotton look like thick clumps of cottage cheese to help you remember that the vaginal discharge caused by candida is described as thick cottage cheese discharge. This is an image of a speculum exam showing a patient with vulvovaginitis caused by candida. As you can see, there are thick white clumps on the anterior wall of the vagina right here, and this resembles cottage cheese. Now we've added another employee that's responsible for dipping the cotton in a tub of acid. This helps remove imperfections from the cotton so that it can be used for the final flag product. Anyway, notice that this tub says 4 to 4.5. This is a reference to the vaginal pH of patients with vaginitis. So patients with vulvovaginitis caused by candida will have a normal vaginal pH, which is 4 to 4.5. This is important because other causes of vaginosis or vaginitis may appear similar, but will typically have a pH greater than 4.5, so the vagina will be more basic than normal. Just like with the girl eating cotton balls, notice that both of these employees over on the right side of the image are wearing shawls with the letter A on them. This should help you remember that candida infections causing vulvovaginitis can be treated with azole medications. Now we've shown a little baby next to the lady spilling cotton on her crotch. I guess she had to bring her child into work for the day and now the baby is crawling on all fours. Notice that some of the cotton has even spilled down onto the baby's red diaper. The red diaper should make you think of a rash in this region, and the cotton balls should make you think of a candida infection. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that candida albicans can cause an erythematous diaper rash in children. Next, notice that the child is playing with a little toy car. The car is our symbol for the heart, and we've used it in many other images to represent endocarditis. So it's here to help you remember that candida can cause endocarditis in IV drug users. All right, now let's turn our attention back to the little office. Let's zoom up so you can see this better. This is the business owner's office, and he's getting ready to enjoy some lunch. As you can see, he's a bit too excited. Look at all that mucusy saliva coming out of his mouth. This, along with the Canadian flag tattoo on his arm, should make you think of chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. This is an immunodeficiency characterized by T-cell dysfunction that predisposes the individual to developing candida infections. Anyway, we've included this in the image to help you remember that candida albicans is associated with chronic mucocutaneous candidiasis. We talked about the cat earlier, but if you look at the fish, notice that we've shown it with some prominent scales. 
This is our symbol for osteomyelitis and is here to help you remember that candida can cause osteomyelitis. If we zoom back out, notice that now we've shown a big machine in the center of the factory with a bunch of little tubes coming off of it. The tubes resemble catheters, and the little balls of cotton flying everywhere are our symbol for disseminated disease. So putting these two ideas together should help you remember that patients receiving parenteral nutrition through a catheter may develop candidemia. The explosion has also affected the nearby walls. Now we can see little craters indented in the wall. And if you look closely, these actually resemble neutrophils. We've shown these neutrophils here to help you remember that neutropenic patients are at an increased risk of developing disseminated disease. The explosion happened in the first place because this guy was hired to work on the machine, and he made a fatal mistake. Now we can see him getting blasted away from the machine, and a little cartoon box is saying KO, as in knocked out. Hopefully he only got knocked out and isn't dead after such a big explosion, right? Anyway, we've used this in our other images, and it's here to help you remember that a KOH prep can be used to identify candida. Now notice that we've shown a stray pet frog jumping around near the exploding machine. The amphibian is our symbol for amphotericin B, and the machine represents systemic or disseminated infections. So, together, this should help you remember that amphotericin B can be used to treat systemic infections. Finally, remember the Funyuns and the girl wearing a shawl? Well, we've intentionally shown them close to this exploding machine to help you remember that echinocandins, followed by an oral azole medication, can also be used for systemic infections. Alright, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 33-year-old female is found to have chills and a persistent fever three days after undergoing extensive excision of metastatic breast cancer. Her temperature is 38.7 degrees Celsius or 101.7 degrees Fahrenheit. Physical examination reveals a well-placed central venous catheter through which she is receiving parenteral nutrition. Blood cultures are obtained and reveal budding yeast. Which of the following is true regarding the most likely causal organism? A. It will exhibit germ tubes at 20 degrees Celsius. B. It is part of the normal skin flora. C, it is catalase negative, or D, it is monomorphic. Okay, hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this patient has a central venous catheter through which she is receiving parenteral nutrition and also has had blood cultures that have shown budding yeast. These features are pretty unique to Canada and should make you think of a candida infection. So with this in mind, the correct answer is B. It is part of the normal skin flora. From the image, recall that the flowers back here are here to help you remember that candida is part of the normal skin flora. The tubes coming off of the machines right here resemble catheters and are here to help you remember that patients receiving parenteral nutrition through a catheter may develop candidemia. A is wrong because candida exhibits germ tubes at 37 degrees Celsius, not 20 degrees Celsius. Remember the floor manager drinking out of a tube from the hot coffee? So, A is incorrect. C is wrong because candida is catalase positive, not catalase negative. And D is wrong because candida is dimorphic. So again, the correct answer is B. It is part of the normal skin flora. And with that, we've covered everything you need to know regarding candida albicans.